Hello friends, welcome to the lecture. In this section, we will see the topic uh, torsion in shaft. For uh, studying the torsion in shaft, we should be aware of the two terms. The first term is moment and the second term is torque. After understanding the term torque, then, then only we can move to the term torsion. So for understanding the moment, just consider a bolt with you and a spanner with you. For turning the bolt, we should apply the force on the spanner. So let this line indicates the line of action of the external force applied. Now this length L indicates the perpendicular distance from the bolt axis to the line of action of the force. Bolt axis means this will be longitudinally. Uh, this we can say this is the longitudinal axis and to this longitudinal axis the line of action of the force is perpendicular. So I am telling the distance L. Now. I can take moment is equal to force into perpendicular distance. Now here I am considering a bolt. The same bolt I am considering here. If we apply the tangent uh, force like this on uh, in this direction on the spanner, then on the bolt the force will be acting tangentially. So this force I will call as it as a tangential force. On the application of the force we are turning. The spanner by turning the spanner we are giving motion to the bolt and it means the bolt will starts rotating so what I am applying here will be the torque because on the application of an external force if the member gets or the member will is uh, subjected to a rotation then we can say that we are applying a torque let us consider the radius of this bolt as capital R. Now we can say the torque T is equal to the tangential force into perpendicular distance. Now we can see that these two terms are very very similar and the unit is coming in Newton meter here and here also Newton meter. Then where is the difference that we should understand. Here we are taking the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the longitudinal axis of the bolt. Here force into external force applied into L. This is the magnitude. Here we can say that torque is equal to this tangential force acting on the bolt multiplied by radius of the bolt into radius. So F multiplied by the radius will give the torque and F multiplied by the length will give the moment. And now one more difference is there and the force acting here. So F we can say it is a static force static force we are giving here but here this tangential force is a movement related force that I can say here Ft means tangential force it what kind of force is that it is a movement related force it is a movement related force okay fine now this is the uh, difference between a moment and a torque basic difference here and now we can explain the torque and the moment in such a way that moment is the measure measure of tendency of a member to rotate of a member to rotate so it is just the measure of a tendency of a member to rotate because we are applying the static force that's why moment we can explain like this always moment is defined as the force multiplied by perpendicular distance but for understanding we are saying that the moment is the measure of the tendency of a body to rotate about its own axis here we can say that the torque it can be defined as the measure of force measure of force which rotates the member which rotates the member in its own axis about its own axis so this is the definition for a torque torque means force multiplied by perpendicular distance we are taking the radius of the shaft or bolt given now this force applied is a tangential force and this torque can be defined as the measure of the applied force which rotates the member about the longitudinal axis so this is all about moment and torque, basic difference between moment and torque.
now we are clear that if we apply a tangential force i am not uh, now i will not say the tangential force now i will say torque because this tangential force multiplied by the radius means this here a torque is acting here an external torque is acting which causes the body to rotate torque and hence the body will rotate so when if a body is subjected to an external torque we can say that the body will start rotating now we can consider a shaft here so this is a shaft and this shaft is held inside a bearing so here i have a bearing now i am applying an external torque in this direction so it is sure that in the direction of the external torque the shaft will rotate so this is the shaft and this is the bearing so in the direction of the external torque the shaft should rotate with in the bearing at the time of application of the torque we know that at the time of application of the torque we are doing an action to it so we will do an action here and for this action according to the newton's law there will be a reaction where that reaction is coming that reaction is coming on the bearing so if we are giving a torque in the clockwise direction uh, in the bearing there will be an anti clockwise reaction so this will be the reaction so if we want to rotate the shaft within the bearing this action should overcome that reaction then the shaft will rotate continuously inside the bearing that is the thing now, now let us consider uh, one and fixed and another in free let we can replace that bearing and make a fixed in the there so here is my shaft this is my fixed end this end is open and on this end i will apply the external torque first of all draw the longitudinal axis like this and draw some parallel lines draw some parallel lines to the longitudinal axis so i have drawn some lines and now just make another shaft here same shaft i am showing the cross section here this is the longitudinal axis okay fine now on the longitudinal axis i am giving an external torque then what will happen for this torque this end is fixed fine okay for this torque there will be an anti clockwise reaction here this is in clockwise direction so this will be in anti clockwise direction a reaction will be occurring see here this is a shaft i am rotating this end in the clockwise direction and this end in the counter clockwise direction what will happen it twist will happen that same thing will happen here now let us show that twist here so here i have shown the twist now let us consider some concentric circles here on the shaft these are some concentric circles this concentric circles i am showing in my cross section of the shaft so this is your my concentric circles so here also i should represent that now let us consider two cells randomly taking so i am selecting here this cell and here from here i should select uh, which cell uh, this cell corresponding to that i am selecting this cell now we can draw the shape of the cells here you may wonder why i am uh, talking about all these things i am trying to explain torsion so here the shape of my cell is like this so i got my two cells now just trying to fix one over the other to let me know what is the displacement occurred in the surface so i understood that this surface got inclined by certain angle 
let us consider this distance as, as delta y and this, this, this angle inclined is phi, phi. So this is the displacement occurring on the surface. Now let us see this figure. This is a shaft. This is the longitudinal axis here. Now consider a line here. On the application of the torque, we can say that this line will get deflected by certain angle. This indicates what? The angular displacement occurred in the cross section. Let us make this angle theta. So corresponding to this angle, we can make another angle phi. So this is the what periphery of the shaft. So on the surface, some amount of displacement is happening and that angle is phi that I have denoted here. And on the cross section, the surface get twisted by an angle theta. Phi. Theta. So this is theta and this angle is phi. Now what is actually this thing? We already studied about shear strain. What is shear strain? Shear strain is equal to displacement occurring on the surface divided by length of the sheared face. Let us consider the length of this face is L. This face is getting sheared. So sheared by a distance of delta y. So delta y divided by L is the shear stress phi. I am calling, sorry, shear strain phi. I am calling the shear strain as phi because if we take angle tan phi is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. That is equal to delta y by L and, small, and for small deformation tan phi is approximately equal to phi and we can call tan phi is equal to phi that is equal to delta y by L. This is the value of the shear strain. Now we may be knowing that for every shear strain there will be a corresponding shear stress. So on the application of the torque about the longitudinal axis, we understood that there will be a shear stress generated throughout the length of the material. So throughout the length of this material, a shear stress will develop. That we understood now. Okay, fine. So these are the things I need to share with you. Now we can explain torsion then you will be understanding these things very like this when a member is subjected when a member is subjected to an external torque to an external torque about the longitudinal axis about the longitudinal axis then it will get twisted and a shear stress will develop throughout the twisted length throughout the twisted length so torsion when a member is subjected to an external torque about the longitudinal axis, then it will get twisted and a shear stress will develop throughout the twisted length. So through the entire length of the material, a twist is going to happen and a shear stress is going to generate when the member is subjected to an external torque. And this kind of loading we can say as torsion. So for explaining the torsion, I have written or you may think that if one end is fixed and other end is free and on the free end if we are applying a torque, then only torsion will come. That statement is wrong. I will never say like this and I have not mentioned it there. Okay. Consider, <coughs> consider a turbine here. From the turbine, we have a shaft. Okay, fine. This is the coupling point. Here we have another coupling point to the generator. So this is the generator and this is the turbine. We know that inside the turbine there will be blades. And when the water is coming, what will happen to the turbine blades? The turbine blades will start rotating. 
Suppose the turbine blades is rotating in the clockwise direction, then in the same direction, what will happen? The clockwise direction, this shaft will rotate. That we know. Now we can see these are the now we can say that these are the actions. So we can say that these are the action. So what will be the reaction occurring here? So on this turbine, we know that this is this joint is connected here to the turbine. On this joint, always the reaction will be clockwise. But this shaft is connected to the generator with another joint. On this joint, what will happen? On this joint, the counter clockwise reaction is occurring here. So take out the shaft from this turbine and generator. We can take out this shaft. The rotating shaft is rotating. Uh, neither turbine is fixed or nor generator is fixed, but the shaft is rotating here. But now we can observe that the we can observe the free body diagram like this. Here on this end, this is clockwise direction, and here on this direction, this is counterclockwise direction. Now we can say that there is no need to fix one point to get torsion in the shaft. For getting the torsion in the shaft. At the two ends, there uh, torsion will come into play if in the two ends two, op uh, uh, two opposite reactions are coming or a couple is coming due to the presence of a uh, active and a reactive force. So this is our shaft and the shaft has one clockwise rotation here and uh, here an anti-clockwise uh, reaction there. Now, due to this uh, clockwise action and anti-clockwise uh, reaction, action and the reaction, the torsion will exist on the shaft. Torsion will exist. Now, we should study about the two type of stresses. First one is uh, shear stress, and the second one is bending stress. How the bending stresses are coming? That we should know. How the shear stresses are coming? We know the shear stresses are coming due to the torsion. When torsion comes comes into play, then what will happen? The displacement of the surface occurs, surface occurs, the shear strain occurs, and the shear stress will develop. When the surface gets twisted, automatically shear stress will develop. And as a result, we can say of torsion, we can say that shear stresses are developed due to torsion. Now, these bending stresses, what is this bending stress? We know that. Consider a shaft here. If a shaft is carried by certain gears, these are certain gears, and if the shaft contains certain pulleys like this, we can say that we cannot uh, neglect this gear and this pulley on the shaft. This weight of this gear and the weight of this pulley is mounted on the shaft will create the bending stress. So bending stress is created by the weight of the gears and weight of gears and weight of pulleys mounted on the shaft so that's how bending stress is formed now we will see the state of pure torsion now we will see the state of pure torsion in the state of pure torsion we can say that only shear stresses will exist so only shear stresses only a small bending will come a small bending stress will come bending stress will come due to self weight will come due to self weight due to self weight so this is the case of pure torsion we must understand what a pure torsion is a pure torsion means the presence of shear stresses only and a small amount of bending stress uh, due to the uh, self weight of the member or the shaft we considered so this is about the pure torsion. Now let us.